everybody welcome to my channel this is miss v i'm back with part two of talking about when my daughter had her heart attack if you haven't seen part one um i advise you to click off this video and go watch part one that way you can really get the uh, message that god is trying to send but either way i'm gonna pick up where i left off i left off telling you about when i went to the doctor to get the um the um excuse for my family medical leave so of course i told you he put me on the paxel and it made me sick so god was saying you're gonna depend on me you don't need to take no medicine so anyway i did that and he wrote um an excuse for me to be off work for about a month or six weeks something like that anyway that helped so that took the stress off because remember i told you my daughter you know every time i used to go see her she'd be like who got kids where my kids Hold on, I gotta pull me some earrings. I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Had to get myself all dolled up. Y'all take care of yourself. Do whatever you need to do to make yourself feel good. I like wearing my little makeup, keep my hair done. I know I'm beautiful. I don't need the makeup, thank you, Jesus. But I just like it. Ding. But anyway, back to the story. Okay. The Paxil, I was taking the Paxil. Then what I said? Oh, I went ahead and took a, like a, a month or a six week leave of absence from work. And so at this time, this particular time, I had just um, become full time. And so let me tell you how good God is. The thing about it is, he just lets you know. I learned a lot of lessons during this um, ordeal. But he just lets you know who your true friends are. And who your loyal um, co-workers are. And so during this time, when I took the time off, I wasn't going to be getting paid because I was working. I had just become full time, so I didn't have any time built up. So, you know, whatever me and my husband had saved up, that's all That's all the money we had to fall back on, you know. And plus, he was still working. So, I, w I wasn't going to be getting a paycheck. And two of my co-workers, single parents now. They donated me 40 of their what's called paid time off PTO hours. So that's a total of 80 hours. We work three 12 hour shifts. So they're 76 hours. So in essence, I would have, that would have been a whole paycheck. Wasn't that nice? And they're single mothers. And if you're watching Erica uh, or Elta, thank you for y'all contribution, even though I wasn't able to use it. But it's just the thought that they did that single mothers. That just goes to show you one of uh, one of my coworkers. She was like, "I don't have any money, but I donated you some of my time." I thought that was so sweet. I was sitting in the weight room when she told me that, and uh, I was telling her how much I appreciate. It. She was like, "Oh, you ain't got." It. You know how people are when you try to tell them you appreciate it, and they won't really let you tell them. But I told her anyway. But anyway, come to find out, I wasn't able to use their time because I had just become full time, and um, HR said I had to be full time for. 90 days so that was fine it was just it just it just brought me joy just to know that they were willing to do that and so i just told them to make sure they get i called hr and made sure they gave them their time back and i let them know that i appreciate it but i wasn't gonna be able to use their time but it's just a thought 40 hours that's a lot of hours to donate to somebody so go you know all this stuff happening just to show you who your loyal um you know um co-workers are and my friends um when I was in the waiting room, I ain't had time. I didn't, I'm not the type of person. I'm not going to be calling around. My daughter having a heart attack, you know. I don't do that. I mean, I ain't had time anyway. I had to take care of them children and get myself together. So, my sister, when we was at the hospital, one of my friends, my best friend, hey, Sandra, how you doing? I love you. Was, um, she works at the hospital, but I wasn't thinking to tell her. She at work. And so, my sister ran into her in the hallway. So, see how God worked? In the hallway, cafeteria, wherever she ran into it and told her what was going on. I look up, she coming through the waiting room. I was like, how you find out? She said, I saw your sister downstairs. That's a true friend. See, y'all don't have to tell. You ain't got to call everybody and tell them. But I'm just saying, see how all this stuff working out? She had the heart attack. The heart attack happened to my daughter. But the the lessons were for a lot of people, especially me, a lot of I'm telling you in the end, everything I learned from this. 
So anyway, true friend, you don't have to talk to him every day because, yeah, girl, I heard something. You ain't got to do all that. Mm -mm, not for no true friend. You hear something that going on in their family, you just go to them. Like one of my friends, her father passed away. She didn't even tell me. I was mad because she didn't tell me. Like a deal? You need to tell me about a deal. So anyway, you know, I had to get my, take my little feelings out of it. I went on, found out when the, I didn't even call her during the, during the time they were um planning the funeral. I just went on, got two cakes from Publix, found out when the funeral was, took the cake to her house and went to the funeral and she was happy to see me. You know what I'm saying? True friend. So anyway, back to the story. So, I got my excuse to be out of work. My co-workers offered to um, donate me some of their time. And, you know, then other co-workers gave me a card with money in it. That was good. That helped out, too. So, my daughter, she ended up staying in the hospital, hospital for about two weeks. It was in May. So, school was still in. So, me and my husband was having to... Uh, when my husband took off, too, he took like three or four days. He asked me, would it help? Did he need to take off? And I told him I would appreciate it if he could. So he had enough time built up, and he took off. Ooh, thank you, Jesus, for sending me man. Maybe I'll wait to that testimony when I tell you about this man and him. Not that he perfect. He ain't perfect by no means. No means. But he perfect for me for right now in my life with the growth I've come to know. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Back to the store. Okay, my husband took off. That helped a lot because we were having to, you know, our whole life didn't change. We were having to stay up, get up. We were rotating. He'll get up one time with the baby. I get up one time with the baby. Okay, then my daughter, she'll get them. She want me 19 now. She ain't know nothing about no baby. I let her, whatever time she wanted to spend with him, I appreciate it. She kept him for an hour or two. I let her go on, keep him for an hour or two. Then she brought him back to me and my husband. Okay, so we were doing that, getting up in the middle of the night, routine, y'all. Lord, I ain't complaining. I'm just telling the story. Okay, so... Get up in the middle of the night with the baby. Having to get up in the morning, get Kyra and Xavier ready. They were 10 and 7. Got to drop them off at school. Okay. So, I came up with, well, it made sense to me. Because I wasn't going to keep taking the kids out to the hospital that much. I took them when it first happened, then a couple days after that. But I, we weren't going to make no plan of going out there every day. So, I went ahead. Me and the baby, especially if my husband was at work. Me and the baby would go ahead and go to the hospital that morning and visit with Tiffany make sure she okay, you know, while they in school. So that that way, when they was out, when they got out of school, I could give them the attention they needed, like take them to the park or whatever we need to do. So we did that for about two weeks. And she started getting better once I told I know she started getting better once I told her I had took a leave of absence and I was going to keep the kid. She started getting better and better, you know. She had the five cents in her heart. And like the doctor explained to us, the... The stents are good. If if y'all don't know what a stent is, I may I don't know if I'm it, um, telling you this right, but it's sort of like a little straw. It's pretty much your her artery was messed up from the blood clot, so they pretty much made her artery with the stent. That was my understanding of what the doctor said. So thank you Jesus for that. Thank you Jesus for technology and and all this medical stuff. So anyway, they had to piece together her five stents to make her an artery, so she can have blood flow to her heart. Okay, and by that being a man-made object, like the doctor said, it's a foreign body. It's a foreign piece of equipment in your body, so your body may try to attack it because it's not supposed to be there. So we had to deal with that. And whatever they do for that, I guess they give you anti-inflammatories or whatever for that. So she stayed in the hospital, got down to the end, almost about to go home. And they said she needed a blood transfusion. And she was nervous about the blood transfusion, which I understood. And so she went ahead and took the blood transfusion, but she asked them to give her some anxiety before she get the blood transfusion. So they did that. And so she finally came home. You know, she was still kind of weak, but she was good enough to come home. So she came home. I don't know how long she stayed at home. But anyway, even when she was at home, you know, we still had to take care of the baby. I take the baby in there and let her bone with her for a few hours, but... Essentially, I still, we still had to take care of the baby, you know, so on. So, she was still living with me at the time. It was in May. So, June, she was doing a little better. I think she might have stayed at home. I don't know for sure. I'm just going to say a week or two. And I'm off this particular day. I'm still 
I think I was still on my leave of absence. And and she called me and she said her chest would hurt. I just started praying. Just asking God for strength for whatever was going on. So her chest would hurt so bad she couldn't walk. So I had to call the ambulance. So we got the ambulance. I let them know she just had a heart attack. She got some stents in her heart or whatever. So they rushing her to the hospital. And... I rode in that ambulance, baby. That's the worst ride in the world. I thought I was on a roller coaster at the um fair or something. I was like, Lord have mercy. This thing is, baby. From now on, when I see ambulance, I, I, I was getting out that way anyway. I really get out that way so they can get on where they need to go because that is a horrible ride. Anyway, so we took her back to the hospital. Come to find out, I guess, I don't remember. I'm just going to say, I think her body was attacking was um reacting to the stench being in her body and she ended up staying nine days at time so we start over again okay i'm getting frustrated yeah i got frustrated so i just got myself together again shed with them till whatever i had to do say my little prayer ask the lord for strength did what i had to do same thing going back to the hospital with the baby. I think the children were um still in school. But anyway, so she stayed nine days. Then she came home. And she ended up she came home on taking ten prescription pills. They said she gonna always be on a blood thinner to keep the stents patent. And she's going to always be on blood pressure medicine to keep it for the stents. Those two she will always be on. But then she was on a whole lot of other stuff. Because you know when you're on one medicine, you got to take this medicine to, to help with that medicine. So she ended up being on 10 different pills. So she got used to taking them pills. And then she finally was able to go back to work in August, I think. And she moved out. And got her own place for her and her three kids. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I thought she was moving too soon, but she was ready. She was already feeling bad about having to move back in. So I just, you know, you had to learn. You had to let your children do what they're going to do. You had to cheer, let your children make their mistakes just like our parents let us make our mistakes. How you? That's how you learn, by letting them make their mistakes. Not that it was a mistake, but I'm just saying in general, even though I thought it was too early. So she moved out. She did good. Had a couple of scares, you know. But the thing about it is, um, they were just saying that her body just has to get used to those stents being on her body. She don't have one stent. She got five stents. So, all that happened. She moved back out doing good, you know, first few days or weeks or whatever. I'm calling every day, checking on to make sure. Because, you know, she going from having helping me and my husband to just her doing it by herself with all three kids. And her older daughter, she was, uh, my older granddaughter, she was a big help. So, she had her kids. She was doing good. And so, I finally went back to work. Um, Still kind of touch and go. For about a year, really. And about, it took about a year. Probably about that next May. That's when I just sat back and just, whoo. That's why I'm able to tell you the sequence of everything that went on. Because I didn't, I wasn't thinking that logical when I was going through it. I didn't think about that till afterwards. I said, God is so good. Look at how he allowed it, fixed it well. I wasn't financially able to help her when she would have to move back in with me. Then had the heart attack. That's, that's something. But anyway, so update on her now. She's doing fairly good. You know, she go, she she take all her medicine like she's supposed to. As far as I, that's what she tell me. But I think she do because it scared her. And she's down to six pills now. Woo, thank you, Jesus. From 10 to 6. I'll take it. You know, two of them, she's probably going to be on the rest of her life. So we got about four more to go. But anyway, she's doing good. She goes to her um, checkups on a regular basis. Oh, let me tell you. The surgeon or um, cardiac doctor that did her um, stint, I, um, and so I said, do you believe in God? A foreign lady. She said, yes, ma'am, I do. I said, oh, okay, I just wanted to know. Thank you and have a nice day. I just, I mean, I just need to know. Because I need to know that they're going to give God the glory when, when, when your patient do better. I don't, want, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want them to be um, 
putting their self on a pedestal. Nah, I want you to give God the glory like I'm getting them doing this video. But anyway, but I thought that was so funny when she said, yes, ma'am, I do. <laughs> but anyway, so we did all that. Um, she moved out. She doing good. She down to six pills a day. She she going to her checkouts, checkups like she's supposed to. Um, Jonah, her baby that she had, he's um he'll be three years old May night. I insert a picture here where I took him to get his first haircut, and he always he smiles so hard every time he see me. It, it'll be months. He just smile. I don't know if he remember you know me taking care of him or not. But anyway, so. That's pretty much it. That's just, um, like I said in my prayer, I just hope someone who's watching this video, if you're a non-believer, I just pray that, um, something is said to soften your heart to start believing in Jesus Christ because, baby, you don't know what you're missing by believing in Jesus. Whew, your life will be so much better, in my opinion. And for the believers, I hope this video helped you to, um, have stronger faith. See how he worked out my situation. He working out your situation. You know, even when my understanding of it is that even when the devil comes in, God allows him, has to allow him to come in. He can't come in without God's permission. So if he's coming in and you know God gave him the permission, guess what? You're going to win in the end if you believe in God. It's a process. He, he has to allow the devil to come in to do certain things to get us ready. Because just think about it. If, if Just think about it. It's a process. Everything is a process. So now that I think like that and I pray for strength instead of trying to pray to ask God to, to, to try to tell God how to fix my situation. Now that I learned the proper way to pray, just ask for strength and to know that his will will be done. I accept things so much better now. I used to pray, Lord, please say, say for instance, I'm going to give you an example. Just, I'm going to use me. Say, for instance, if my husband leave me. And I say, Lord, please let my husband come back. No matter why he left me, it don't matter why he left me. I'm just hollering, please let him come back. No. If he left, he's supposed to be gone. If if that's God's will, he, he need to be gone. God may have gotten him out of your life for a reason. But I'm just saying, I'm just using that example of how I used to pray. Now I pray, Lord, say my husband leave now. I say, Lord, just give me the strength to deal with your will that you have for my life. That's the prayer I pray now. It's so much better when you pray like that. Because when you, because his will going to be done it, really and truly. It, it really don't even matter what you say in your prayer. If, if it's his will for that man or woman to be gone, for you to learn whatever you need to learn or to get out of harm's way, he's still going to be gone. It don't matter what we say. Every now and then he may go ahead and, you know, answer your prayer just to show you this what you need. But pray for strength. That's the best way to pray. I learned that. I pray for strength. Somebody um, make me mad at work. I said, Lord, just fix it. That's all I say. Just fix it. I don't say nothing about nothing. I don't tell them how to fix it or nothing. And next thing you know, you'll go to work and they'll be like, such and such, put in her notice. You know, but like, I just said, thank you, Jesus. And just go on. I ain't got to tell everybody in the department what I prayed about. I, don't, I don't, ain't got to do all it. You ain't got to do all that. So, I hope this video was helpful for somebody. You see them smiling now. I really want to cry because of how God, good God was, how he, you know, brought all these resources in to help me and my husband and my daughter in this situation. But I'm going to tell you one more thing, then I'm going to leave. My daughter did get frustrated at the end because she was like, Mama, let me ask you something. She said, when people come to the hospital and they be like, is there anything I can do for you? Let me know if there's anything I can do. Did I really mean that? That just me talking in the carnal spirit when I said it now. I said, in my opinion, I don't believe that most people mean what they mean that. I think they say that just that's, that's just they just feel like that's the thing to do. Cause to me, like my sister was in the hospital, I ain't have to go ask her um anything. In, you know, I, I I did ask her anything. I need you. Is there anything you need me to do as far as your house or whatever, or or you know help you with the kids or whatever? I did do that, but then at the same time, I still gave you know deal with that gave a call with money. Okay, you. Somebody in the hospital, you know they ain't working. It don't matter if they got money saved up or not. You know they ain't working. Give them a call with a little money. I don't care what it is. 
Then I, you know, I'm not bragging. I'm just giving y'all example stuff to do. Then I had a friend. Her uh, brother was in the hospital. I just took, when I went to visit, I took a tray of ham and cheese sandwiches. Y'all sitting in the waiting room. People home, they ain't going to just tell you, oh, yeah, girl, bring me something to eat. No, they ain't going to tell you that. They're going to say they okay because that's the modest thing to do. Because people, we as humans, we are prideful. We're not going to say that. So if you got somebody that's in the hospital or something, take them a, a cheese tray or something like that, a fruit tray. Some, you know, quick that folks can just nibble on. Because most folks, when they worried and stressed out, they ain't going to go get nothing to eat. Just give them a little, take them a little snack, a little fruit tray out there. Take them to the waiting room. I'm telling you, you may not seem like, but people appreciate that so much more. But anyway, back to the answer I gave my daughter. I said, in my opinion, I don't think a lot of people really mean what they say. I said, well, I tell you what you do then. Uh, put them to the test. Tell them you need some money to um, get your prescription done. And tell them your mama needs some help take care of these children. Because she's going from having grown children to take care of three babies. I said, try that. And my daughter just laughed. Time, mommy, you so crazy, but I was for real. I'm just saying. I mean, so um, if you're watching this video and you one of them people that be like, is there anything I can do for you? Um, let's stop that. Just do it. Just do something for them. Hand them a card with some money. Take them a fruit tray. Go pick up their grandchildren from school or something and take them to the next destination. Um, go check on their house for them. You know, get your husband or brother, cut their grass, stuff like that. Just do it. Because all this, um, anything I can do for you. I'm, I'm like my pal said, it's it time to stop. It's time to stop playing church. And let's, it's time to start doing stuff for each other. It's time to stop playing. Just do it. Anything you can do, it ain't always about no money. Just go sit in the waiting room. And just sit with them. You ain't got to be talking. Just sit there. Sometimes that's all it takes. Just you, just your presence. Just you taking time out your schedule to sit there with somebody who's going through. You'll be amazed. You'll be amazed. I'm going to tell you. Because when I was going through, I can remember right now certain things that people did. And not, it wasn't so much as what they said. It's, it's little things they did. Like help me with my grandchildren. So me and my husband can still have a life and go out on a date. Stuff like that. So that's it. That's pretty that's pretty much it from this for this video. But let me tell you what I learned for myself. I did get a little frustrated at time, which is normal what I was going through. Number one, God taught me patience. Because I didn't have no patience. And he knew I didn't have no patience. And he knew I wasn't mature enough for the situation I was about to enter into. So that's why he allowed it. Me not to have the financial means to help my daughter so she can go ahead and move in. So I can go ahead and be used to her and her kids. Number one, that was the patience. Number two, there were some relationships that were mended. Because people realized that life is short. So I'm not going to go into what relationships were mended. But just put it like this. It, it was her side. Of, it was my side of the family and his side of the family that was at the hospital. And then you had friends and things. So... I'm going to leave right there. There were relationships were mended because of the ordeal. So God allowed that, that to happen also. And um, another thing I learned is that I have a good husband. I learned it. I knew it, but I learned that during this ordeal. Because he was patient with me even when I was going out acting a fool. Just, he'll bring me back. He'll say, baby, let the devil use you. I love when he say that because it do be true. I be like, he showed him the truth. He don't even get mad about what up. Like if I say something crazy, he'd just be like, baby, you letting the devil use you. He always do that. I said, ooh, I thank you, Jesus, for this man. But anyway, I learned that I have a good, a strong marriage during this ordeal. Because that's a lot. That was a lot. And number four, what I learned is that I did... Even though I was a um, teenage mother, I did do the best I could with my daughters. And I saw some qualities in them during this ordeal that made me proud. That's all I'm going to say. For them to be young young ladies, they were passionate and they were um, considerate of others. You know, you know how some teenagers, they just, like my younger daughter, instead of her, you know, she could have been not sitting in the hospital. She could have been like, I got a date tonight. I'm going to the club. No, she right there with us. And if I needed her to help with the baby, she helped with the baby or whatever. Even if she had plans, she still did whatever she could to help. So, 
It's just a lot of things. Them the main five main points. I guess it was five. I don't know. Four or five. Those main points that I want to bring out in this video. But um, that's going to go ahead and conclude this video. I thank God for the growth I have right now. And whatever he's doing in your life. Just know that if you believe in God, it's a fixed fight. You're going to win in the end. The fight is already fixed. So you do whatever you got to do to get through your situation. But remember, if you believe in God, it's a fixed fight and you're going to win. And you're going to give God the glory in the end. That's the purpose of it. That's why he allowed me to make this video. I never thought I'd be on YouTube telling y'all, look, none of my business. But like he said, it ain't your business, baby. It's my business. Don't you know if he don't wake me up tomorrow, I won't be here? I, I can't even wake myself up. So how is my business? It's his business. But anyway, I'm going to leave y'all with that. I hope y'all got something out of this video. But I was, I'm totally serious. Everything I said and everything is true to, to the best of I mean, as far as I remember. So everything in this video is true. I may not have been right about the stents or whatever if I got some medical people watching. But anyway, y'all understand what I was saying. But anyway... I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video, but I'm going to continue to help you save on some of the things you need so you can get some of the things you want on the next video. Have a good day.